Hello, we are here to discuss some of the new features related to the financial aspect of Business Central from a prior NAV product. Some of this information you might have already seen in your existing NAV product, but it's just to cover some of the features in case you did not even know that they existed. So the first area we're going to go into is just do you want to make sure that you review your general ledger setup, purchase and payable setup, and sales and receivable setup. If I go into the general ledger setup, and so here are a few aspects of it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the edit button so it has a little bit of a different light to it. One of them is the system does deferrals now. This came out in about 2016, but now there's also a separate allowable posting range if you're going to defer expenses or revenue so that it doesn't interfere with your regular posting restriction range. Another option that you have, or another feature in the system, is the payroll trans, um, transmitting of the import format. So this just allows you to use data definitions to import in your payroll. If I scroll down here a little bit, there's also this feature here, show amount only, debit and credit only, or all amounts. So in the general ledger or general journal format, you can use the amount column, or the debit credit column or them all. And now it just can be a setting in the system and each person doesn't have to go in and personalize. There's also hide the payment method code. There's preview posting. So posting preview is an option in the system, has been around for quite a while. And this just allows you if you wanna group it by type or extended capabilities for additional entries. And it just allows you to see more information when you do the preview. There's also some SEPA that you can use as a direct debit amount, and then also to enable a data check. So some of these you can hover over, it'll give you some information, then you can also do a learn more if you wanted to. Then there is also an option in the system where it has financial or account schedules for you, and we're gonna talk about them in a little bit more detail as to how they come into the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and just back out of there we're going to just select the purchase and payable setup and you'll see similar options when you're related to the sales. So one of them is that, you know, related to defaulting dates, defaulting quantities, but down here where it has the copy the line description to the general ledger entry. So when I'm putting in a sales or purchasing document, I can have the system take the description on my line and actually put that to the GL. Currently it does not do that if you're on an older system of NAV. I can also copy the invoice number to the payment reference field. My document can have a default, whether it's a GL or as an item. So you have those capabilities now where you would not have had them in the past. And then you also have the same thing on the purchasing or the sales side of the system. So speaking of the financial reporting, if I go ahead and select it. So in the past, up until a recent release, the system has always been called account schedules, any of your balance sheet or income statement. So now they are financial reporting. You also have the ability to copy a report from one to the other. So for the most part that still has the row definition, still has the column definition and the ability to view the report. And one aspect of it that is a little bit different is if I go into the chart of accounts itself, you'll notice that I have an account category and account subcategory. So account category is an asset, liability, equity, income, cost of goods sold, or expense. So you're gonna tag the account to be one of those. Those cannot be changed, those have to be set. Account subcategory is something that is provided for you by Microsoft, but you have the ability to change it if you wanted to. You name all of your accounts, whether um, whatever type that you want, so if I scroll down here, you'll see that there's um, a variety of them as I get into the expense side of it. And then what the system will do is it will allow you to um, process and pull that information in together to create a financial statement. So if I come up here and I put in to generate, it should have to generate, sorry, it's gonna be under GL account categories, and you can also pull it from the chart of accounts itself, but it'll this will show you how it's mapped. It'll show you if there's any that are missing. There's a little information pane over here, and it'll show you any without a category mark to them. 
And then you can come up here and you can generate the financial statements. And that, when it asks to do that, it'll ask you, do you want to keep your existing ones or do you want to override them? So it'll create, keep the existing ones and create new ones. So if I go back to my financial reporting, you'll see that it has the ones that begin with an M. Those are the ones that are generated. So there's a balance sheet that's generated, a cash flow, income, or retained earnings. So you can use these accounts schedules or financial reporting or you can certainly create your own as has been done in the past. So the next area that I wanted to talk about really quickly was under the actual chart of accounts itself. So if I come back over here to the chart of accounts, so there is a couple newer features within the chart of accounts and I'm just going to come down here and maybe I'm going to pick on this account here. Let's just do this one, employee benefit. All right. It doesn't matter which one. It's The system has what's now is called um, a review policy. So this just allows you to allow the review or allow a review and match it. So if I select to allow a review and I go into the ledger entries, now I have the ability to look at these entries and I can review them and mark them. I have the ability to do a whole selection of them if I wanted to, or I can do one at a time. So this just allows me to come in here, select the ones that I want to mark as reviewed. So maybe I'm, I'm looking at them, I want to validate the, the entry was done correctly or whatever. And maybe not this particular account, but other ones that you could do. So I can come in here and I can select a range of them and then I can select them as reviewed. It'll also show those that are reviewed, hide that are review or show all entries. So if I need to look through these, then I have that ability to. So some people might do this for a deposit account, um, you know, unprocessed values or something like that, where they want to make sure, hey, I reviewed every entry in there and that is a good legitimate entry. A couple things that are out there before we actually get into the journals and get into the ledger entries is just so that you know, when I come up here under the environment that is available, this shows me actually all the companies that I can go into. I have many companies in my system, but if you had a few companies, it's a great way to switch from one company to the other. I can also take and switch it and open it into a new window if I wanted to or keep my older window there. So that's just one of the options in a way in which you can open and look at different companies. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is just doing journal entries. So I'm going to come over into general entries and then we'll talk about some of the general ledger. So if I come in, I still have my ability to do my batches. One of the newer features over here is an option for copy to posted um, journal lines. So this is actually set up in the general template area where you select that. And so what happens when I post the lines, it'll actually go to a storage area that I had that information ahead of time. I can also do the same for background error checking. So it's kind of checking in the background to make sure it is something that I can post to if there's going to be any issues or not. And suggest a balancing amount. So this will help you as you're putting in the information. So these are ones that you could turn them on or off and then you could just play with it to see how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick into the default batch. And so you'll notice that I had based on my setting, I have an amount and I have a debit amount and I have a credit amount that are saved. So just a couple things as we're working with journal entries. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to type in my account. I have an account name and now I also have a description column so I can override this. All right, and I'm just going to put in $500. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to offset it to a fee account just so I have it offset. Now, one of the newer options also is this deferral code. So I can have it for expenses, revenue done as of next month, or I can do different options with it. So if I come in here to select and I select to manage, edit, I have in here where I can do it at the beginning of the period the end of the period, beginning of next period, beginning of next calendar year, or using the posting date. 
So the periods can also be done if you use a 445 period. This works just fine. And then you can pick where you're going to put your deferral to. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is with the beginning of the period. So I'm going to cancel. So one of the options that you have in the system under the posting is the ability to do a preview posting. So if I select a preview posting, it'll show me that it's going to post. Oops, I don't think I put that in there. I did not put my code in there. So let me go ahead and put my code in there. And then I'm going to come over here to my preview posting. And you'll see that it's going to make 28 entries. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And so what the system does is down here at the bottom is I have my description where it's posting it to purchasing for $500. If I come back up here, um, that one was to my fee account. These are to my actual expense account. It pulls it out of the expense account as of the 19th and puts it to my deferral account. Then starting on the 1st, it goes ahead and posts those values out. So this will allow you to defer revenue or to defer expense. And you can also, on the purchasing or sales document, you can actually create your own schedule on the fly if you wished. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here. And like I said, I can go ahead and just post that through if I wanted to. If I only wanted one of the amounts to be deferred, then I could just put it on a second line. So while I'm in the journals, I also just want to remind you that you can go ahead and do it as a workflow. So it can be sent out for an approval request now. I can also attach a document to it. So I have a couple different options when attaching. I can um, drop it in there or I can come down here. I can say to attach the file. And so I can just bring it up. It's going to allow me to just drop it in there. So I am going to go ahead and just drop in a PDF. You could do a Word document. You could do Excel document. You could do a text file, whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and drop in that file. And then I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to post it. And then we're going to show, look at that one in just a moment. But while I'm still into my journal entries, I want to show you a couple options with the journal entry and I'm going to go ahead and just move that down. So one of the features in the system is that I can do an import in. So if I take and copy this line out, so I'm just going to grab that line. Okay, so control C, it says one row copied. I can go into Excel, I can paste in the, the row and then I can put data in here, whatever I want. I'm going to now just, I've highlighted it, but let me just highlight it again. Come over here and we'll copy it. Control C. I can go into my journal here and Control V and it will paste the transactions in. You don't want to rush it. You want the system to do the thinking that it needs to do. If there's a problem, I'm posting about 48 lines. Oh no, I guess it says 27 lines. It does tell me at the bottom how many lines I have in here. If I had a problem at row 15, it would tell me the row that I have the problem on. It would post the 14. I would see the 15th. And sometimes it'll actually tell me what the issue is with the transaction. This will bring in um, the, the dimensional information if need be. I have all my data here. I can adjust anything, but it does allow me to save it. So it's similar, you know, the system already has a standard journal in there. This just allows you to do a copy paste and bring in the information. There's also configuration packages that can be used that can import or export data. So that is one way to get the information back into the system here. And we can go ahead and back out of here. So I'm gonna come back to the beginning part and what I wanted to show you was that posted journal journals. So we talked about that you can have that as a selection on your batches. And that brings in and shows you all the transactions that have been done. So this first one right here is the one that I did that balanced out over here to this account. So there's my one line for that entry. If I select my find entries here, then I can see the general ledger entries that were made. And it'll also show me, and this is why it's taking just one moment here, it'll also show me my incoming document. So I can go ahead and select that and then I can select it again and I can see the main attachment and it'll bring it up and show it to me. So I can have the attachments very easily done to my general journal entries now. So I'm going to back out of here. Now this is another journal that was posted previously. 
I can tell the system to go ahead and copy the whole register to a journal. So if I say copy the GL register journal, where do I want it to go? So I'm going to go ahead and select it into the Diana batch. I can change the date. So that was done on the 13th. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the 19th. I'm going to do 19. And I can even reverse the sign if I wanted to. So let's just go ahead and we'll put that in there. And it'll say OK. And it says 69 have been copied over there. Do I want to open it up? And I'm going to say yes. And then this will bring in and show you the entries and they're offsetting differently than what they were brought in before. So this is a great way to also move journal entries in and out of the system and post as you need them to. If you do a ton of journal entries, this is just a really good option for reviewing them. If you need to, um, you can still use the reverse transaction or reverse register that has been in the base product for quite a while. All right, so another thing I'm just going to go over here and search for it is recurring journals. So one of the newer options on the recurring journal is there's a reverse date calculation. So now it doesn't have to be if you choose to have your recurring method as reversing, it doesn't have to be reversed and brought back in the next day. You could tell it when you want it to come back in. You can also do your balance by dimension if you're using the balance feature. And then there's a reversing balance by dimension. So this is a really nice feature to um, break it out by dimension, which it has not been available in the past. So back to the actual chart of accounts for a moment. And we're going to look at some income accounts here. So a couple features within the chart of accounts itself or that you can do as part of the chart of accounts. So I'm just going to come and select into the ledger entries. And I have my ledger entries here. So one of the options that you now have is maybe if you look at an entry and you realize that you posted it using the wrong G or dimension value. All right, so I can select this one here and I can actually select a couple of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and select those two and I could select a whole line of them. I could select many of these. I can come in here now and do correct dimensions. You do need to have permission to do this function, so not everybody can do it. I'm going to select correct dimensions. And you can see that I have other ones there but there's my PE location. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change this information and we're going to put Phoenix. And then I'm going to tell it to run and we're going to run it immediately. I can also run a process that validates that that's a good combination, that it works together. If you don't run that and the system doesn't update the values, then that means that it does have a conflict. Maybe you have something in the combinations that doesn't allow it to work, or that something has to be restricted on the particular GL ledger entries. So now I've updated that information. If I come in here, I also have under um, one of these, it does track my change history. So I do know that if I made a change on that dimension, it is going to track that value. Another option that you have related to um, the general ledger information is just under the Analyze. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So what Analyze does is just allows you to look at your information and group it a little bit differently as you want to, and you can actually save these views. So it comes in and gives me all of my sales information. So maybe I want to come in here and I want to group it by this PE location. So I can drag that down because all of my departments are related to sales. So there it has my information and I could add some additional pieces to this if I wanted to. I could look at it by a particular customer if I wanted to or customer type, other dimensional information. I can also come over here and I can do an analysis where I can set filters on it and look at that information. I can put it into a pivot table or a pivot mode and it just allows me to look at that data. And once again, I could open it up and take a look at that information. I can come up here, I can rename it. I could delete it if I don't want it. I could range it in a different level. You can see I have a different options out here also. 
this analyze button, you're going to see that that's available in multiple places in the system. Anywhere that there's a list, you're going to see that. Back out here, back related to the dimensional values. I'm going to go ahead and just select a few lines here. If I come into account, I have my dimensions multiple. If I wanted to in the past set some dimension values, I could come in here and I might want to have it by department and I could say that the code is mandatory. I could come down here and I'm going to do that PE location and I'm going to say the code is mandatory. But if I had in here, maybe there are some departments that technically cannot do sales. So I don't want every department, but in the past I either had to name a department or it had to be all departments. So now I can come in here and I can state ones that I know for sure are never going to have a sale. Those are the ones that are allowed to have a sale and that one can't. Maybe I come in here and one of the locations doesn't do sales. They're a production facility only. So I can come in here and I can set that information and it makes it a lot easier when I'm doing my posting, my setup. I don't have to worry about an incorrect value being in there. I'm going to go ahead and back out of here and have my sales there. So the other one that's related to inside the general ledger entries is you also have the ability to bring forward the source type and the source number. In the past, this was not visible. Only reason I'm seeing it here is because that's what I balanced to. But now you actually can see the source related to it. I'm in sales, so I'm going to see customers then I have my number. If I was in expenses, I would see the vendor and the number. So in the past, it's always been done as a modification, but now you have the ability to actually see it. I stated that you could make a description change as far as it'll post the description change. I can also come in here to edit the list and I can change the description. So I can, as I'm looking at this, change this information. I can F8, copy from above. So I have the ability to do that. It's really the only thing you're going to be able to change in the ledger entries is that description field. But it does come in handy because you can review that information and look for it at a later point. Another option that you have related to the finance side, and this is also, again, related to anything that is a table or ledger entries, anything in a list view, is that you have the ability over here where you can open it in Excel. So if I click on this, it'll have the ability to open it into Excel. It takes it right out to Excel and it'll come out as a file for you. You also have the ability to edit in Excel, which the only thing, you, once again, that you can edit while you're in the general ledger entry table is going to be this description field, but it would allow you to take the data out do a massive update and import it back in. This is really handy if you had a massive change for vendors or a massive change related to customers. Maybe the payment term changed or a sales tax change or something like that. Then you can go ahead and use this open in Excel and edit an Excel feature. So if I come back to the main screen, there is an option now called search in data. So this is a little bit different than the find entries or navigate. So if I come in here and I'm just going to type in the first three letters. And so it finds my GL ledger entries that I have written in there where it says Diana's corrections. I have a posted purchase lines that actually uses that. So I can select on it and it'll open up and show me that information. So it'll take me to my posted purchase invoice and down to my lines and I can see the information there. If I back out, then I also have, like I said, the journal entry. So I could come in here and let's just see if Amazon has an entry. So there's descriptions related to an Amazon entry. So I can select those and it'll actually say show me all. So I can now see everything that has an Amazon related to it. And then I can drill into it and take a look at the record to see what's there. I can see the GL account. So 65600 is normally my um, office supplies and then I see my entry and I had the ability to edit 
that entry if I needed to. I can review that entry. I could reverse the entry. I can correct my dimensions on the entry. So the next thing is just related to just a couple of additional features that are part of the general ledger side of it. So I can do some cash flow now in the system. So it has an option for cash flow. There's cash flow where it'll set you up one in the financial reporting, but you can also do cash flow worksheets in the system. You can also do uh, cash accounting in the system. One of the other features you have is the ability to schedule a report. So if I come in here and I'm going to do trial balance and let's just open that up. And, and actually it's on a lot of them are under the send part here that I can send it as a PDF and XML, a Word, Excel data and layout. So that way I'll get the header and the footer information. I can do it data only, or I can actually schedule it to run. So some um, clients like to run their income statement every Sunday night. So when they come in first thing in the morning, they're sitting in their report inbox and they can pull it up and look at it at any point. An Another change, this might be related to or help you if you're dealing with the reporting side of it there is, let me just go back to my trial balance there, is you have the ability to tell the system which report you want to run. So if I come in here and we'll just pick this one this time, right at the top there, it does allow me, if I have multiple of this version out there, then I can change and select to that one. And if I scroll down here, I also have the ability on my main screen to, you know, put in some different charts. This is my accounts payable to view by month. These are my favorite accounts so I can keep a look at them. I have the ability to integrate in with Power BI reports. I have a trial balance view here. And anything that, you know, you can underline and go to, then you can pull up that information and see what entries make it up. There's my report inbox, so I have my purchase advice report that runs on a regular basis. Another option that you have is you can do master data sync. So if I come over here, see if I have it selected, yes, for this system. So I can come in here and I can synchronize tables and across the system. So you notice I had many companies there. If it was regular that I was creating companies, then I do have the ability to synchronize the information and create a new company fairly easily. So I could do that where I'm pushing over the master or a chart of accounts. I'm pushing over the dimensions. I'm pushing over the setup. Maybe I want to push over vendors. So that is an option that is available that makes it a little bit easier to create the companies. And yes, I'm sure I want to exit and go back to my main area here. The other thing I wanted to talk about related to the finance side of it is statistical accounts. So in the past, if we wanted to track something, we needed to uh, put it into the chart of accounts and put it at the bottom and you know hope that we made the debit and credit and we didn't accidentally pull it into our chart of accounts. So now you have the ability to create as many statistical accounts as you want. So I have one that's called new customer and one that's tracking pounds of aluminum. I can look at my balance or my entries that are made. So this is how often am I putting in my new customers? Where's my location? Maybe my department that I want them to. And so I have, I just go into my journal, pull it up. I have my date there. So let's just say as of the 1st of September and I'll put in September 23 and I'll put new customer. I can put in a description and we added 56 to the sales department in Phoenix. And then I just register it and it'll post that in. And then I can use that when I'm doing my financial reporting. So if I come back over here, I go to my financial reporting and I'm just going to go ahead and just pick any of these um, or financial reports. I can come down here. I'm just going to go to the bottom. And so you can see right here, I have an employee in there that's related to the headcount. 
then I can come in here, I can do a formula, and I can take the total operating expense and divide it by that. So it is available as an option. So is the account category is available as an option also. All right, so I think that's it for newer options related to Business Central and the finance side. There's many more, um, as we call some of them are undocumented changes where it's just, they have put it in the system, but we might not be aware to necessarily tell you about it or remember that it's there when we're doing these kind of presentations. Thank you.